Alabama, Georgia for the SEC championship. That's uh, the way it should be, shouldn't it? And this is the way it should be as well. We get the take from Uncle Lou right here on YouTube. And if you have no idea who this guy is, come on. <laughs> Check him out right here on YouTube. Just look up Uncle Lou. How's it going today? Good, Mark. I appreciate you having me on. I, uh, I always have a good time over here. Absolutely. We have yeah. a good time having you on and checking out your work as well. It's good stuff. It's funny stuff. It's innovative. It's creative. So people check it out. It is a good time. All right. This Georgia Alabama game. Um, you've got that faction of people out there that believe Alabama is always going to be Alabama and they're just Alabama. So when it comes time to play, they're going to be ready to play. Then you got those people that are watching the LSU game and the Arkansas game and the Auburn game and saying, this is not necessarily where Alabama is supposed to be, um, and they may not just quite be up to it, and Georgia's just out in front of the rest of the field. What's your feeling on all that? Uh, I feel like people are treating Alabama like this is this is Alabama. Uh, it, the line is six and a half. There's no other explanation for that. It should be ten. Uh, you, you see these people do the blind resume test. This, this is usually when they're trying to prove a point about the college football playoff. And without telling you the team, they'll put up like their overall record, wins against ranked teams, stuff like that. And you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this team's ahead of that team. If you took Alabama out of the, out of an Alabama uniform and, and, and everything else was the same about their season except their logo, I don't. It, it would be a 10 point spread. So I think people are, you know, treating Alabama like they're Alabama. That, that, that's the only reason it's six and a half. I mean, Georgia's just clearly the better team. They would say what they want. Uh, the, uh, the, the better team usually wins in football, which is why Alabama has beat Georgia, uh, you know, the last three times we've played. They were the better team and they won the game. Uh, Georgia's the better team this year. And, uh, you know, for Alabama to win, it's going to be the typical things you hear. Georgia would have to make mistakes, turn the ball over. Alabama needs a punt return for a touchdown. The stuff you normally want to do if you want to beat Alabama, Alabama, I think, has to do that to beat Georgia in this game. Folks, please like the video. Share these videos out on social media. Subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Subscribe to Uncle Lou's platform if you don't uh, are not a subscriber already. So Kirby Smart. Nick Saban, 2017 National Championship game. Obviously, smart, inherited talent for Mark Richt, or there's no way you get to a national championship game. But he has upgraded the talent in just ridiculous waves of high four and five-star talent on both sides of the ball, especially defense. And we know what the defense is doing right now. It is a wrecking crew. George has been good against Alabama 2017-2018 SEC championship game with a two-score lead in the fourth quarter. On and on and on. Why is this Georgia team? They've been talented defensively before. Why is this one so historically good? Well, I, I think a lot of it is what you said. He, he, the 2017 team was talented. Rick recruited top 15-ish talent. Um, uh, Kirby, every single year since his second year, has been top five. I mean, I think he's been top three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there might be one year he was outside of the top three, but and he's about to have the number one class again. That'll be the third time in five years. And talent does matter. And of course, Nick Saban is the greatest college football coach of all time. I, anybody that tries to argue otherwise is, is, is just being silly. But uh, you could take Nick Saban and his entire staff, give them Vanderbilt's roster. They, they don't make a bowl game. So talent does matter, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, this team, this Georgia team, it's they play so many different players on defense. Um, you know, Georgia for a long time <clears throat> offensively would lean on people all game long, all game long, all game long. Then the fourth quarter, it would be run, 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 run. Your defense was wore out. Georgia's defense is doing that to people now. Uh, you know, Jordan Davis plays 20 plays a game. In the fourth quarter, he's he's no worse off than he is in the first quarter. The, all these guys are fresh in the fourth quarter. You're playing 25 guys on defense. Um, and stuff like that matters, and that's why you haven't seen um, even your typical like garbage points it hasn't happened uh, against UJ. I mean, you're up 40 points. It's hard to keep 
mentally focused sometimes, and you give up a touchdown here or there. Um, and Georgia hasn't done that twice this year. I think they gave up late fourth quarter touchdowns, but you're averaging, you're keeping people to six points a game. You know, uh, the, the old offense first defense argument. I, I still think you need an offense to win. Um, but if your defense is holding people to six points a game, I mean, that's historic numbers. That's not just this year's best defense. I mean, you got to go back a long time to find numbers like Georgia's putting up defensively in terms of points per game, yards per game, all that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, it, it's been crazy to watch. And I'm as surprised as anybody that, uh, it looks like a defense is going to win a national title. I, I didn't think that was possible in the version of college football that, that we have today. Um, you know, where it seems like every team in America is scoring 40 points a game. I, I wondered if, 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 if not that Georgia's got a terrible offense, but Georgia's not Ohio state or Bama or Oklahoma, um, or in whatever team you want to name when you talk about these high flying offenses and things like that, but they get the job done. I mean, 40 points a game. That's not, you know, that ain't too shabby as they say. Um, you know, people tell me Georgia's offense is terrible and Alabama's is amazing. Well, I guess two points is the difference between terrible and amazing. You know, Alabama scoring 42 a game, Georgia scoring 40. Now, some of that, I think you you probably have to credit the defense with some of that. I mean, eventually, a bunch of three and outs equals more possessions offensively for UGA. You know, so I I don't think Georgia's got uh, some amazing offense, but but you know, it's been good enough to beat almost everybody we played by thirty points. So I hear this criticism almost every day. So you probably hear it ten times more than I do. Because if somebody's excelling like this, then people are going to take their shots. And, and that's fair. to us. If it is fair, that's, that's fine. Evaluate the team. Look at the schedule. So they're going to say the best teams you've played. I think the best teams you've played, I would debate between Arkansas and Clemson. One of those two teams, those are the two best teams that you've played. Now, the best offenses, when Tennessee was coming up on the schedule, people were saying, oh, okay, this is going to be the team. Man, they're tearing it up right now. They're going to be the team to test Georgia, and it just didn't happen. They scored a touchdown early, then psh, shut garbage. down until it was garbage time. Yeah. This Georgia team, to me, and Arkansas, my good, I think they're a really good team. They turned around after they got crushed in Athens and put up 51 on Ole Miss. And Ole Miss is not, people think they're still bad defensively. They're really not. They've improved tremendously. So what Georgia is doing and it's more than just the numbers. You got to watch them play. When Clemson and Arkansas being the two best teams that they've played, this is what comes to mind. The best way I can describe it to people Georgia doesn't even let the play develop. They're not just stopping the play, they like wreck the play. They're like pushing guards in the backfield and wrecking plays. It's, it's crazy to watch. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I I don't remember ever watching a defense like this. I've heard comparisons made to a lot of other teams. Of course, the 2011 um, Alabama and LSU defenses were amazing. Um, Georgia's given up less than half uh, the points per game that either of those defenses did. They gave up 11 and 13 points per game, respectively. Uh, 1985 Oklahoma. I, I'm not even going to pretend to know anything about that team. I, I you know I I was seven years old. But I've seen the numbers. I think they gave up 6.1 points per game in 1985. Georgia's at about 6.5 right now. After They were at 6.9. They shut out Georgia Tech. Puts them in around 6.5. I mean, it's an all-time great defense. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to proclaim them the greatest defense of all time, although I do think giving up 6.8 points per game in 2021 is probably more impressive than giving up 6.1 points per game in 1985. Um, I would. I don't know this. I could probably look it up, but I wonder what the average points scored uh, offensively are in 2021 compared to what they were in 1985. I'd be willing to bet that the average offense is scoring at least two touchdowns more per game today uh, than they were in 1985. You had a lot of ground and pound back then. The triple option was in its heyday, all that kind of stuff. I'm not putting that down. It was great football back then. But you know this about anything. It's hard to compare anything from one era to another. So I'm not going to proclaim Georgia the greatest defense of all time or anything like that, but it's the best defense these eyes have seen in a long time. And the way you just sized it up is the best way. It's not the perfect way, but we don't have a perfect way to compare. But not just to take the numbers and say, well, they were doing that then. 
they're doing this now, but to take it against the modern day standard of what you just alluded to, take it against the modern day standard. I guarantee I haven't run the numbers either, but just like you, I think it's probably a two touchdown difference per game between 1985 and now. All right. I'm going to hit you with Stetson Bennett, JT Daniels, and also Stetson Bennett. I think like when people get something, when people get something locked into their, I got, I got to check this out. What do you got there? I, I, what WWJTDD? What would JT Daniels do? So you're a JT Daniels guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Stetson good. JT better. Okay. Do you think though that people have it locked in their head? Walk on three star, five star, and it's tough to get past that. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, you also can't deny. Uh, forget the rankings. You you can't deny what you've seen with your own eyes. I mean, uh, you can't pretend last year didn't happen. Now, obviously, Stetson's a better quarterback this year than he was uh, last year. But, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I still think Justin Fields is a better college quarterback than Fromm. Uh, Unfortunately, Stetson had to play the better teams last year. We saw JT tear it up down the stretch but it was the Missouri's and Mississippi States down the stretch. Well, 400 yards against Cincinnati. That's two and a half games worth for Stetson Bennett. I mean, I, and I'm not on here to knock Stetson Bennett. Not, Stetson Bennett has, has played well this year. He hasn't turned the ball over. That was the biggest problem last year. Hero ball. Uh, you know, he's like a less talented, smaller version of Brett Favre. Um, you know, he thinks he can make every throw. You know, I don't know, you know, Brett Favre, all-time leader, career interceptions. I don't know how many people remember that. I mean, he threw a million touchdowns, and he made some great plays, and he ran around like a chicken with his head cut off, and one of the greatest QBs of all time, arguably. He's also the career leader in interceptions in the NFL. I mean, and and Stetson sort of stuff suffers from that same, or at least last year he did. He's cut a lot of, a lot of that out this year. Now, he's made some terrible throws this year. Some he got lucky that weren't picked. Um He's nowhere near the arm talent of JT Daniels. That, there's no one that will argue that point. So you have to look for other ways. Stetson maybe makes that up. He he is mobile. He can move around. Uh, he's good in the, you know he can get out of the pocket. He can take off running if he needs to. Um, and uh, decision making has been pretty good this year, outside of a couple of you know times here or there you could point to. But he's played good enough not to cost Georgia any games um, so far. You know. I don't know what would happen if Georgia was down two touchdowns to somebody in the fourth quarter, couldn't run the ball. I've got no idea. Um, no one does because, it, you know, it hasn't happened. Um, I think only twice this year he's thrown more than 20 passes in a game, Stetson. So, I, you know, I don't know uh, what, you know, but I don't see any this far into the season – uh, you talked about who's Georgia's best team that they've played and all that. I, I, I don't know. Would people be more impressed if we played LSU and beat them by six points? Um, I mean, I don't know what people want. The reality is when you're ranked in the top five, there is no one you can play. Who can Georgia play for somebody? Because you know what's going to happen on Sunday at, at Saturday at 8 o'clock. It's going to be, oh, look at this. Bragging about beating the worst Alabama team since 2007. I mean, you've been around here. You've been around YouTube long enough. You know how this stuff works. Okay. I'm old enough to remember when Arkansas was about to beat us two months ago. Oh, running quarterback. Best team Georgia's played. Rinse and repeat. Auburn. Kentucky. These are all teams that were beating Georgia on Friday. On Sunday, they were terrible and they were overrated. You know, so, um, and, and the transitive property, I, I I get it. Throw that out the window. But at some point, when you've got four or five common opponents, okay, maybe you can't look at any one game, but I see a theme here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I see Alabama giving up more points to Arkansas than Georgia gave up to all four common opponents combined. I mean, at some point, you just got to say, you know what? Uh, Georgia's just better. 
You know, I mean, they survived an onside kick at the end of the game to beat Arkansas. Georgia beat Arkansas 37 to nothing. They, they didn't cross midfield. Um, Auburn, four overtimes. Okay, oh, it's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. No, 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 no. The best team wins. Rivalry game, not whatever. I don't want to hear that. Florida, a uh, different Florida team. I'll give, you know, uh, that, that was a different Florida team, I think, with a different mindset at the time that played Alabama uh, as opposed to the one that played Georgia, I think. So maybe you throw that one out. Uh, I'll give Alabama a mulligan on the Florida game, and uh, they can give me a mulligan on the Clemson game. <laughs> JT Daniels was hurt for the Clemson game. I don't, I, you know, I, 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 I've thought about that a thousand times. How did that happen? You know, uh, at the time I couldn't have been happier, you know, and I'm normally very critical of Georgia. Uh, but I was, you know, I was like, Oh my God, we just beat Clemson. We're one and Oh, that's our hardest game of the year. You know, I, I didn't know how bad Clemson was when that game ended, you know? Um, so I don't know what happened. I don't, I think both teams played that game way too tight and way too conservative. I guess because it was a top five matchup, first game of the year, you don't know what Clemson's going to do. Clemson doesn't know what Georgia's going to do. JT Daniels was hurt, which makes, you know, you know, now I realize why every pass we threw was at the line of scrimmage. I mean, we must have ran a tight end screen nine times in that game. Uh, so, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, we beat them and that was that. And I'll, I'll give Bama the benefit of the doubt on that Florida game, but there's too many other common opponents you can look at. And I mean, is where is Alabama going to find a right tackle between the Iron Bowl and Saturday? I mean, they've got the worst right tackle in football. Um, they don't know who's playing center. Now, how's that? I mean, how's that going to work out? Jordan Davis versus whoever Bama's putting in there at center. There's just too many. Bryce Young is better than Stetson Bennett. Okay. But Bryce Young's not playing against Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett's not going to be on the field with Bryce Young at the same time. I mean, so this whole, oh, well, Bryce Young this, Bryce Young that. Yeah, Bryce Young got sacked five times last week against Auburn. Stetson Bennett been sacked six times all year. Mark, guess how many penalties Georgia had against Georgia Tech? This is a game that we were up 30-something to nothing at halftime, ended up winning 45 to nothing. How many penalties Georgia have in that game? Yeah, I got to tell you, that game wasn't really on my radar except to check out the final score. I would say um, 11. Not oh. a single penalty. Oh, okay. Not one false start, not, no offsides, no delay of game, no too many men on the field, nothing. A single penalty. This team's focused. And I do know, for as much as I, I do agree that Bryce Young is better than Stetson Bennett, I do know that Stetson Bennett on his feet is better than Bryce Young on his back. Yeah, facts. Facts. Uh, and, and I don't understand this. But people talk about Bryce Young like he's Vince Young. The guy's got negative 30 yards rushing. Stop. I mean, come on. The guy's got negative 30 yards rushing. Now, in college football, it's ridiculous. They, they subtract yeah. sack yardage from your rushing total, so it's not like he's never gained a yard on the ground, but – I mean, is there – can you think of any other elite dual-threat quarterback with negative 30 yards rushing in the history of elite dual-threat quarterbacks? I can't. So, I we, let's uh, – now, the other thing is they don't want to get Bryce Young hurt because uh, Tua and Jalen Hurts ain't coming off that bench this Saturday, Gumps. That's the bad – see, that's – what do you – please. Uh, I, look, look, I'll get on my hands and knees and, and kiss the ground Nick Saban walks on if he puts Paul Tyson in that damn game. I dare him to do it. He won't do it. Not even Saban's got the balls to sacrifice Bear Bryant's great grandchild in that game. Only reason he's even on the team. Nepotism, Mark. How's that working out for Clemson? <clears throat> Clemson gets one injury at the at linebacker position, and every single player you see on the field is named Venables, Swinney, or Herb Street. It, 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 it makes no sense. You get 85 scholarships, you're handing them out to nephews and stuff. It's just dumb. And now you got Paul Tyson on the team. Oh, Jalen Milrow, the guy hadn't thrown a pass. So forget, yeah, send him in too if you want. Point is, uh, point is, <laughs> you better find a way to protect Bryce Young in this game because there ain't no backup QB situation happening this time. That I can promise you. <laughs> Almost got a little carried away there, Mark. I'm trying to calm myself down here. <laughs> oh, it's 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 fun. Uh, I just kick back and uh, enjoy. Yeah, Will so, Anderson is amazing. OK, uh, let's give credit there. Will Anderson, unbelievable. He would probably even be in the rotation uh, on UJ's defense. That's how good he is. 
Okay. He would be, he would be in the rotation. Okay. He's good. And much to my surprise that that wizard of Oz guy they got from uh, Tennessee has played well. Uh, Henry, whatever it is. Uh, oh, Toto. Uh, he's played well too, I, but nobody else. And then, okay. Offensively, you have one scholarship running back. What are you? And even when you had your running backs, you couldn't run the ball. Alabama's not Alabama's inability to run the ball has cost me $500. Now I want to know which Alabama fans are going to pony up and help me offset that. You know, I, I, I bet a guy uh, that was yapping about how terrible Alabama's ground game was back in like week two. And I bet him $500 Alabama would finish over five yards per carry on the season as a team. Well, unless they're running for 600 yards against UGA and 800 yards for get somebody in a bowl game, that ain't happening because right now they're at about 4.1. So that's not good. So that's going to cost Uncle Lou $500, and that makes me mad. So I don't know which Alabama fans are going to help me offset that. I'm assuming none. Uh, I can't even find an Alabama fan to bet me on this game. Type, 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 type. But then they, you know, uh, I don't know how to work PayPal or, you know, whatever the case. My mom won't give me the debit card, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> yes. As you stated earlier, that's how it works on YouTube. Yes. The, the, the people run and scram when their predictions don't uh, come through. But we take the bullets, but that's what we chose to do. So that's it's right. all fun. Yeah. Before we got a part here. I got to get your take on this college football playoff. Has the committee done a decent job to date? What do you want to have happen this weekend? What are you rooting for besides Georgia wins by 50? Uh, well, there, there's not really, I'm not one of these people that goes, I want all the favorites to lose. Cause I like chaos and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the, any favorite of four points or more in the playoff era is 24 and one in conference championship games, straight up. So you just don't get very many big upsets in these conference championship games, at least not since the playoff era started. I do think uh, I think Oklahoma State could lose. I think uh, you know Utah could lose. Um, I'd put Michigan probably a little further down the could lose list, but maybe they would be third in line. I think Cincinnati will roll. Um, I, I think they'll win. I think Georgia will win. Um, I don't think the, the playoff committee has done a good job, though. This might be one of the worst uh, years they've had. They 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 stuck their foot in their mouth with the with the Ohio State, Oregon, Michigan, Michigan State thing. How can you not be consistent on the same data point in the, inside the same top ten in the same week? I mean, it just it made no sense. And 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 I'm guilty of this too. I say, well, it'll work itself out, and because I think people assumed Michigan State was going to lose again anyway but that's that's not the point um you know the playoff committee always says we don't project this is what we think as of today we're not projecting what might happen down the road well you clearly were there you clearly were um it, it made no everyone knew ohio state was better than oregon and everyone knew michigan was better than michigan state so rank them one way or the other you know but you're you're talking out of both sides of your mouth with the with, with, with you know they had because they had oregon ahead of ohio state but Michigan ahead of Michigan State, like literally Michigan, like I saw Michigan beat Michigan State, you know, last week. And now here you are. I would think it made no sense. Um, no sense at all. I thought they had Oklahoma ranked too low. I didn't understand that. I they had weigh them down at eight or something when they're undefeated that late in the season. Oh, well, a bunch of close wins. OK, well, Alabama had a close loss. Well, what are we doing? I'm right there with you. Alabama and, and well, we're, we, well, we're not, I mean, the whole UTSA thing. No, they're playing a completely different level of football. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it, what it is, is, and here's the, and, and I need to understand this and we just all need to accept this. There are no rules that they, they, they don't need a reason, whatever they tell you. It, it, they are coming up with what they think the order should be and then coming up with the justification. That's it. That's what they're doing because there are no rules. There's nothing that says if this happens, then you rank tier. If this happens, you make, you make the playoff. If you have the same record and you lose to a team you below, there is none of that. 
Well, they blew their cover a couple of years ago when they tried to, from the beginning, they went through all these tenants that they have conference championships and best record and best schedule and da, 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 all these other things. And then finally, when they got pushed against a wall and couldn't talk themselves out of it, they started to lean on, well, we just select the four best teams. Right. And, and that's fine. That's yeah. why you just tell us that. Yes. Tell us that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, that's the thing that it seems like I said, I, I feel like they come up with the list first. And the reasons, explanations, and justifications yeah. afterwards. Okay, well, we're going to have Alabama at three. So, what are we going to tell people when they ask us why Alabama's at three? Well, we can tell them they uh, barely lost or barely beat LSU. We could tell them that. Uh, oh, we could tell them they had six yards rushing against LSU. That's why we have them at three. But we got Oklahoma at eight because they have a bunch of close wins. Well, <laughs> Bama had a close loss, their third. <laughs> It makes no sense, man. Now I don't believe I don't believe in any of these conspiracy theories. This thing, people, you know what? They don't even know who's on the committee, Marty. These people, oh, they're, they're propping Alabama up. Why is the athletic what what for what reason is the athletic director of Rutgers propping up Alabama? Why? Why would he do that? Why would some professor at Arizona State University be involved in some secret cabal to keep Alabama in the top four? They're not. You know what it is? They're just wrong. That's all. They're just wrong. They were wrong when, with the Ohio State, Oregon, Michigan, Michigan State thing. They were wrong having an eight no Oklahoma at eight. They they were uh, they were wrong when they had Alabama two or whatever they had them. It was just ridiculous. There's no you ain't seen nothing all year from Alabama outside of a, a Miami game that tells you they're anywhere close to two. I mean, so they're just wrong. You know, I don't think they're. They're not all Alabama fans. I get tired of hearing that. Neither are the referees either, by the way, Alabama fans. Referees ain't Alabama fans. They're just terrible referees. God, this, this has been the worst uh, officiated year I've ever seen. Let me ask you this. Bad. Do you think the officiating is getting worse, or do you think we're noticing it? Like, uh, like, like before everybody had a, you know, now everybody's got a cell phone. So you see every bad thing that a police officer does. And people are like, I can't believe police are doing that. Maybe they've been doing it all along and you're just now seeing it. Well, is that the case with these uh, referees too? Like I don't, uh, because of HD and 4k and a hundred cameras at a game with, with different angles of everything. So we're noticing it. It seems yep. to be like the officiating has been really bad. You would think that really they would bad. be better. You would think with all the technology and all the training and the instruction and just just with, with all the eyeballs and the money that's on it, you would think that they there would be a concerted effort to make these guys as good as they possibly can be. But yeah, they I think they're officiating scared because of the replay. I think that's yeah. part of it, too. And they need to do something about the replay. Why is it taking five and six minutes? Some, I mean, the, the, the amount of time it's taking to confirm a play is mind boggling. Yeah. I mean, they, they got to do something. There, a lot of these noon games aren't in until four o'clock now, you know, you're missing the, you're missing the first quarter of these three thirty games because the noon games aren't over. Yeah. It's it's getting ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, I could go on and on. Shout out to Jameson Williams. He's a good player. Bryce young, good player. Will Anderson, good player. The Wizard of Oz guy transfer from Tennessee. Good player. Lots of good players. Not a good team. Check out Uncle Lou right here on YouTube. Most of you probably already do, but if you don't, get on over there. Uncle Lou, glad you could make the time. Yeah, me too, Mark. I appreciate it.